Hello and welcome to the In Between Podcast. I'm your usual host, Joe Spawn Brace, and I'm joined here by Tony Tones at RT, who is hiding off screen for legal and criminal reasons. Yeah, that's all um, true, 100%. Hope you enjoyed my Two Face cosplay last week because <laughs> I did not want to adjust the camera mid podcast live and accidentally give away Tony's location to the Federal Bureau of Information. Is it's information? Is it? Uh, what the FBI is Yeah, I think for. so. Or the NSA. The Central either. Intelligence Agency. Yeah. Don't want either of those. I feel like the Amer- the American ones always have like cooler names. Other because we've only just got like was it MI five? We've got MI five, and MI six. MI six. Come on, Tony. They're not real. No, they're real. Both real. One one is like um internal. One's like um external, like international. Yeah, yeah. The spies. Yeah. Anyway, we have the best spies. You haven't been playing anything this week that is worth... Oh, wait, you've been playing Guild no, Wars 2, I, I can talk about you an update to, to Guild Wars 2, but yeah, we, your, yours is more interesting than what I've been doing, because I've been playing Guild Wars 2. I have been playing <laughs> Stardew Valley, and not just Stardew Valley, I've been playing Stardew yeah. Valley multiplayer. So it's you, something I've wanted to hear about for a while. Uh, so if you didn't know... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I thought I was on this. Hang on. Okay. If you didn't know... Um, what the fuck? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I was going to page up. Okay. So Stardew Valley just did an opt-in beta for uh, <clears throat> multiplayer now. So Stardew Valley 1.3 uh, is now available for public. So you just have to uh, type in a code. I think it's jumping Jaminos, which are like Wait, Jaminos what? are little creatures. You know? oh, okay. You need to worry about those. But like type it in and then you download a small patch and then that'll patch you onto the multiplayer version of Stardew Valley. And it's pretty cool Um, from what I've been... Playing, um, I think I, I didn't know there was mods. There's apparently there's mods for Stardew. Yeah, yeah. There's I quite looked a few it up. Mods, there's like yeah. a Nexus for it. Yeah. Because I was looking up. They're not on one point three yet. They're on like um, one point two or whatever it was before. Yeah. But uh, it was really fun. Stardew Valley was legit. Like really cool. Um, from what I've never played. So I've never played Stardew Valley before. So I've but experienced. You've I've been, to. Yeah, I've really been wanting to. Yeah. And I saw it's coming out for multiplayer, so I was like, well, I really love playing like multiplayer kind of like farming or yeah. survival. Yeah, farming games. multiplayer is, is some, for some reason really fun. I don't know why. Shout out to Farming Simulator 2018. Yeah. 20, what, I think I, have, year. I think I have like 20, Michael got me like 20, 2015 Farming Simulator. Yeah, I don't know saying why. I've never played it. I don't know why you got this. Though. He always gets There's me, he always gets me <laughs> simulator games. He got me like I am to- well, I am he got bread. me I am bread the toast simulator. <laughs> yeah. He got me goat simulator and then oh, yeah. farming simulator twenty. Wasn't goat simulator really good though? Yeah, goat simulator <laughs> is actually legit, uh, really good. I think it's Coffee Stain Studios. Yeah. Uh, I would actually highly didn't, recommend Goat Simulator. Didn't, didn't they make another game that I thought was good? After they, I thought they made I am bread. Yeah, but there was another game as well, like it wasn't a simulator that they did. Let me look it up. I am bread. No, yeah. that's boss's. It's maybe that was someone else. Oh, I guess I don't know. Oh, they made the oh. So the people who made I am bread made Surgeon Simulator. Oh, okay, right. That's the way it's going. Okay. And then see, I see, don't. See. I'll see if Goat Simulator devs made it. You type in Goat Simulator. <laughs> I am bread comes oh, up. What? Oh, it's because I'm looking for games by Boss of Studios. Hang on. So if you look at Goat Simulator, it's Coffee Stain Stain Studios. Oh, they made Sanctum. Sanctum. That's what I'm thinking the of. like yeah. weird FPS tower defense. Game, yeah, that's actually which good I game. did not enjoy. Really, personally, I, I really, really liked like it. it. I like tower defense stuff, though. So. But um, so if you don't know the multiplayer for Stardew Valley, the way it works is that you both spawn on a farm, so you can either do it from an existing save file. Yeah. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to like buy a coop, like a spare house. To, oh, I see. Uh, a spare house to build for your friend. But if you're starting a new game, your new... house each. There's new options, so you can spawn as many houses as players you can have. I think it's one to four players. Okay. I've only played it two player at the moment. But like a couple of days ago with Matt, because we really wanted to progress through like the seasons. We went from spring to um. So I think it. I think it's like a lot slower in multiplayer because you, there's two of you doing. Yeah. Things and I guess you'd have to, otherwise you go through it super quickly. Yeah. Because there's like there's subtle differences, the big differences. So like one of the big things is you share gold, um. So it's probably best to 
both build one big farm than it yeah. is to try and divvy up stuff because you will have to share gold. It'd be more, it'd be more efficient. It's more like cooperative, yeah. although you can have two separate farms and try and do it that way. Uh, another thing is not all quest progression um, is go- is shared. That's, you will have to do like separate things. Like if you say, for example, there's a quest to buy a backpack which is needed to like upgrade your inventory space. That will be like two thousand gold um, out of your shared money, and then only yeah. one of you will get a backpack. If you find a chest, only one of you is going to be able to take that sword or that boots. Yeah, which is kind of annoying. I do wish it was more like because the, you're sharing the gold. It's kind of pushing you more towards a cooperative game. I do wish that more of the West progression yeah, well, was like cooperative. They've kind of chosen like they've they've slowed down the gameplay because there's two of you, but they've also not changed the loot system. Then they so they kind of should have d- done chosen one of them. Like don't do it or so the, the community center is actually shared. So there's this thing called the community center. I know mm. you never played it, but basically that's how you kind of upgrade your farm overall. Is that you repair the community center? Mm. So you have to put like wood into it and different <clears> materials. <throat> And that's kind of how you push it. And there's this thing called Jiminos in there. Basically, kind of there's another subplot story where you go and talk to a wizard in the wizard tower and he communes you with nature and you start seeing these weird little creatures. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've seen the intro to like Stardew Valley, but it's kind of pretentious. It's kind of like that thing where um, they're like, you're working, you work as like a developer in like a office studio. And then it's like, I think it's like, so your like dad or something passes away or something like that and then they pass on like a farm to you right. and then you're like fuck this I'm just gonna go to Stardew Valley and start a farm that's but what I've I think, always wanted but I, I think even though I pretend it is it's kind of cool I think it's called like um, Joba Market or something mm. and one of the things that throughout the game is that they're like trying to shut like throughout the story they're trying to like shut down the small farm businesses and move everyone over to their kind of market and you can go to the dark side and take like their membership. Oh, okay. So there's kind of like a choice you can yeah. have between whether you like and that changes the gameplay. Yeah. Which okay. Is really cool. Like at the moment, it's like when we first started playing, my friend Matt, I was like, we are going. I was like, I want to be a hundred percent cosmetics, zero percent actual <laughs> farming in the beginning. <laughs> All I want is like to make the farm look good. That's yeah. my that's my main objective. This farm here looks really cool. It's got like a bunch of fences and stuff. I yeah, hope I can make it that cool. Some effort in. But no, we've we've got like um, a couple of farms set up. I think we're farming iron at the moment. We're going into the mines. We just upgraded our tools to copper at Ooh. the blacksmith. Yeah. Uh, which takes Wait, a couple. You upgraded it from what to what? You've, it was from stone to yeah, copper. Yeah, it was stone. <laughs> Whatever it was before, but when you upgrade them, they become like more efficient and stuff. Okay. But there's also a level up system. So the more you use something, the more efficient you get with it. Yeah. So um, you can go from like uh, your axe. So cutting down trees, you can go for your axe efficiency plus one, and then you can like um, build more stuff out of, out of wood and stuff. Mm. And you also cut down trees more efficiently. You take up less energy. Cut down quicker. Uh, your levels are separate as well. That's another separate thing, which I think is fine. Yeah, don't you want to level up by yourself? Yeah, I think leveling up by yourself is fine. I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. What else was I going to say? I feel like I've got a lot to talk about, but I have to like remember all of it because there's information <laughs> it the, overload in my brain right yeah, now. Yeah, is it the, the the sleeping system was like you could if you both oh, slept so, it progressed the um, day? In the single player game, you'll know that if you've played it, you pause the game to. Um, do things and it'll like freeze time yeah but when you go through your inventory and stuff it won't pause time uh in multiplayer and another thing is uh, when you want to progress through the next day because you're exhausted so you each have individual exhaustion bars from doing like um cutting down rocks or cutting down trees or farming or whatever yeah um you need to both sleep to progress the day but if one of you is still awake and running around you can go into bed and kind of rest a little bit yeah while he's still moving around which is pretty cool the way the day and night cycle is kind of weird. It's like, no matter when you go to bed, you'll always wake up at the next day, kind of. Yeah, okay. There's always like you, you in the go, morning. If you get like exhausted at like 11 a.m., you can go to sleep and wake up for the next day. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of benefit to not fully exhausting yourself because if you get fully exhausted and wake up tomorrow, you'll wake up with less energy rather than a full energy bar. Oh, okay. Right. And you, you don't want it to... You don't want to go to bed like... Completely knackered. You don't want to go to bed too exhausted, and you can't go to bed too late. Yeah, okay, otherwise, that makes sense. Um, you'll like pass out. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so, so like um, it's kind of a more casual, relaxing game. There's not a way. There's not like a huge survival element, like of a game similar to this. Um, like uh, if you can fight enemies, so if you go into the mines, there will be like slimes and bugs and stuff you can fight with like swords. But if you die, basically, you just like pass out, kind of Pokemon style. Right. And you, wake up in your bed. Yeah, you wake up in your bed, and then it's How? like you passed out. The doctor has taken these fee from you. Like, <laughs> oh, it's it's like Pokemon. Okay. Like you lost like three hundred for winning, <laughs> uh, for losing. Sorry. Yeah. And you passed out, and you wake up in your bed, and it's the same. If you get fully exhausted, you'll just pass out. Um, so it's best not to do that. I'm so glad in the world of Pokemon, ch- ch- children gambling is. Uh, yeah, you, just, absolutely... you gamble on animals <laughs> fighting, and then you you lose the money, and then you pass out because you're so exhausted. Um, and they rob you. Yeah, and they, then they rob you. But I think it's kind of got like that Civ syndrome at the moment, where it's like you go to I'm bed. start playing it at like I don't know, like nine o'clock or something or eight o'clock or something yeah. and then it gets to like midnight and like are we gonna go to bed soon man because like like one, one more one, one, one more day just one, one more day <laughs> well you have to go to sleep in the game and get one more day out and we need to <laughs> plant these seeds and water yeah. them and the moment i don't know if it says but we're moving towards iron so we can set up sprinklers oh okay. around our farm because that's something we'll be really you guess nice. irrigation we're girl. manually watering all our plants at the moment uh, which is kind of tedious but hopefully we can set up some sprinklers so we'll be able to get through that. But no, it's really fun. I'd highly recommend it. Picking it up, the multiplayer beta is really fun right now. Um, I don't know. This is the beta, so there's stuff that could change. Maybe they'll change how quest progression works in yeah. the full release, which I'd really enjoy if they could do that. But everything I can play, I could, I can, I fully understand the hype for Stardew Valley. It is yeah. fantastic. It's one of my it favorite looks great. games I've played. It's a game that I've never played, but have really wanted to play. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. And I I definitely I did play a little bit of single player and I'd say the experience is very much enhanced through multiplayer. Yeah. Through being able to you know I think like with Minecraft it's kinda of like when you build like a giant structure, you want to show it off to the yeah. world. Well it's also like, like you have to think of it in different ways that like, oh, how do you want like this room to be placed next to this as well? No, like well, I want a really cool looking farm yeah. and me and Matt can like build that together yeah. and show it off and it's, stuff. Yeah. And, Martin you don't well. even need new mechanics. Shout out to Martin Nelson for buying me the game. I oh, actually bought it for you. Yeah, it was okay. just. Oh, I I didn't buy it. It was just like it's got. I just sh- he just said he's got multiplayer beta now to Martin. He's like, oh, that's cool, and then he got it for me. Oh, okay. I was playing a bit with him as well. Um, but that's in like a separate game. We do have a third house in um mine and Matt's game. So I said Martin come and play in yeah, our farm. Yeah, so you, you chose three. Um, but um, Matt's just gone to Finland. So um, we won't be playing on that game for a little bit. I just said I'll just go into this the save game file and uh, do some like some cut down some trees. I'll just gather a load of materials while he's AFK. Yeah. Um, because what happens is the host uh, when you host the game, you get the save game file, and then you keep like the save game files, kind of like saving the server. Oh uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so as it's... I said, you can do. You can use previous farms and build a, another house on them if you want to do it that way. Yeah. But I think if you're playing multiplayer, most times you're probably like introducing somebody else to the game, so it's probably best to start again. I did see there was a mod on the Stardew Valley Nexus that added like split screen using like the basis for multiplayer, so it was like oh, really? okay. local multiplayer for Stardew Valley, which was kind of cool. That was a good idea. Not sure who who would use that, but. That's well, good, it's pe- good. It's pe- good for some people. I people guess. who live with other people, you know? yeah, for if sure. You, if you have a family member, or if you, you know, have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, then you, know, you could blow with them. But um, yeah, that's Stardew Valley. Um, do you want to talk about Guild Wars too? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not sure how long it will be, but what was the update? What happened? Um, I don't know if you. Uh, it's uh, it's the water update, basically. The water update. Well, we know how Minecraft is getting its water. Oh, they changed underwater combat. Yeah, there's like a, a shit ton of changes there, but most of them, as far as I can see, is wasn't water updates. They just made it so like more skills could be usable underwater. Mm-hmm. I can tell you the most number ones that I know, but that's kind of about it. Underwater combat should be not be less effective than land combat. Part underwater movement can be significantly more effective. Underwater skills should have combat flow parallels to on land yeah. weapons. So the biggest changes that I've seen underwater is 
Revenant, the new class added in Heart of Thorns, mm -hmm. now has an extra weapon they can use underwater. Oh, that's cool. So, and they actually rebalanced the original weapon they had, and they actually... For my... Because I have um, a condition build with my Revenant, so, like, I, 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 I had Torment to everyone, so I, like, built my entire build with the conditions, and the, the spear yeah. that you initially get doesn't do conditions. Oh, the new, they give you Trident now, which actually does condition damage. You can actually use. I your can Revenant actually, build yeah. I can. I could not play Revenant okay. underwater at all. It was terrible. Um, there's a few like there's like a minor change for like the skimmer mount. They made it so if you're above water, you have like I think a twenty five percent increase in speed. Oh, that's cool. So you're like super. So basically, the skimmers have the equivalent, the water version of like the Raptor, basically. Yeah. It's actually really quick now. Um, but the other noble change as well, the the new class for the thief called Dead Eye. Teeth? Yeah, Dead the Eye. Teeth class? Um, they actually changed. Because they said it like it was boring. People just like press the same buttons. Yeah. Which I would sort of agree with. But I didn't understand like what they changed. It didn't, like what they wrote down wasn't like how like it doesn't seem that intuitive of what will actually change. Because they basically did it so you basically you're fi you you get given the rifle, right? The, and you, you kneel so down. Which one's the Dead Eye? Is that the teeth of the revenant? That's the thief. Okay, this is the yeah, so they changed the dead eye. So they they they, they changed how malice works, which is the new resource that the, this class gets. Okay. And they made it so the five on the rifle you can do you can use infinitely. I had a previous build with it where like I changed it so the five did like more stuff because it was an ammo skill. But now they removed that, so I don't have that ability. But I kind of want to play Guild Wars too, but the problem is that I feel like I'm really far behind because I'm like two expansions behind, and until I get those two expansions, I will be like. Uh. I would say there's less there's things. less fun if you don't have the yeah. expansions for sure. Well, and they're not yeah, cheap would you, either. Would you recommend skipping Heart of Thorns? You don't need to just. I haven't done the Heart of Thorns story. I I just skipped straight to Path of Fire. You would recommend just getting Path of Fire. Yeah. Maybe. Unless there's something like unless you really want to play Heart of Thorns, mm. like because there are some maps that are good for like getting loot and things like in Heart of Thorns. But is there any features other than the story and the glider you're going to miss out on if you don't get Heart of Thorns? Not really. Okay. The glider's like the only one. Like, there's some really good gliding stuff in there, but that, that, not really. Alright. So yeah, Dead Eye, I. Because I like, completely destroyed my build for Dead Eye, so I had to completely change it. Hmm. But it's actually, it is actually more fun, because like, it's more invisible based now, so you go invisible and then you use skills that are more powerful based on how much malice you've built up. Oh, that's cool. So that's I, kind I, of more stealth focused. Yeah. Which I didn't understand, because now like, they made it so. It changes the, the the class itself changes your steel skill with the dead eyes mark, mm. which I have the build for makes me go invisible. Yeah. When you dodge successfully at attack, you go invisible, and with the rifle now, the one ability when you're invisible is like a really super powerful like charge up attack. Okay. So it's like because that used to be when you kneel down, you press four, and that uh, they they moved it from the four kneel down to stealth attack on one basically. Oh, thinking about um, is it guild halls in Heart of Thorns? Uh, there's extra stuff. I don't think you need Heart of Thorns. I don't you don't need Heart of Thorns to access the content. Don't, I don't think so. I don't think because I don't know how expansions work in like I Guild don't, Wars Two. Like in yeah. WoW, there's like certain chunks of like progression are just cut off. You would if have, you don't to, have the expansion. Yeah, you have to ask Michael because he looked into it more. But, but I think we, I, the fact that he, we both have the expansion means I don't think you have to have it to be able to. I okay. think you maybe can't create it. Well, I definitely want did access to the other specialization. Yeah, is what sure. I'm saying. Is there other special specialization? Which one was the revenant added in? Is there uh, revenant? Revenant's just yeah. Revenant's the class in Hearthstone. So if you yeah. want the class, you would have the to have profession, as it's called. Yeah. Well, I, I call it class for yeah. sure. Um. Well, for instance, like I go for on my ranger, I switch to druid, which is a heart of thorns elite specialization. Is that more like that's beast based? What's, um, how does druid? No. Go? It's more... It's a healer class. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's but like, th there's no Holy Trinity in Guild Wars 2. There's well, no there Holy is. Trinity. <laughs> there always has been. <laughs> but you don't have to use it, though. That was like... When, when Guild Wars 2 was coming out, there was like... There's no question. Well, there there's, no, there's no Holy <laughs> Trinity. There's no healer, tank, you're, you're, DPS. You're quoting a friend of ours. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. There is still a Holy Trinity. You don't have to use it because you can be like... Into, like You can all like partially tank. You can all partially heal. Yeah. But Druid is like... Like I get you, my the isn't new resource like, you get is based upon healing. Isn't like the water elementalist, like uh, a healer. A healer, yeah. yeah. But everyone has the capability of healing other people. 
some degree. Just yeah. some are better at it than others, but... What is like the engineer have like a band-aid cannon? They, yeah, you, you, well, and there's quite a few stuff I can heal people. They have like um, a turret, they have bandages you can heal around, and you have like elixirs you can throw at people, which will heal. Okay. So... But you I would agree there's no hurry. That, that was you like one of the biggest it. complaints you have with Guild Wars 2 is that the underwater combat sucks. Yes. I don't. I think it's still kind of bad. Wrong number. I think it's still kind of bad, I think, but they've made. Like, I don't think. Because um, before, for Revenant, there's like. How Revenant works is that you call different legends. Yeah. You, you only have two active at one time, and there's like two separate ones. You have like two different ones active above, like on ground, and two for water. But Dwarf. Which I always use for leveling up Revenant was not available underwater for some reason. Oh, shit. But it's now available underwater. That's cool. So you can actually use you know, it. Yeah, I always thought that them completely changing how combat yeah. worked underwater was like stupid. It was it was interesting, like well, oh, if you're underwater you can it's like playing a new class, but it's then it's like Yeah, but your build doesn't change yeah. though. <laughs> I, I would I will tell you what I would prefer they did. You know how like I wish you just kept your normal above ground weapons. Right. And they just, like, say your two ability doesn't make any sense underwater, they just switch out, like, a new version of it that works underwater. If I'm a fire elementalist and I'm shooting, like, fireballs underwater, that doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it does. You can do that underwater. Yeah, but it it doesn't. Like, if I'm a water elementalist. No, if a fire doesn't get extinguished by water, if you have it hot enough. Yeah, but it doesn't make too much sense. It does. In, like, a kind of how it looks. No, it, I I would say it works fine. Like from what okay. the the villages they have are more like magma and warfare based. I don't think it looks great if you have like someone. Well, it's not fire, shooting fireballs underwater. Well, it's not really fireballs. It's more like magma stuff, like underwater stuff. Okay. When, you, when, you, when you're with elementalist, it would just be like a bunch of bubbles though. By that basically, point. but like really hot bubbles. Yeah, yeah. I I it I from what I've played with elementalist underwater fire, and I have a fire build. Like it yeah. works. So. Okay. What know. was this the um, sunken treasure? What's this about? I don't know. I've gone two keys for it. The water is largely <laughs> unexplored. Rim has the dive master with a passion for discovering underwater treasures, reviving Lion's Arch. Apparently, there's some sort of there's tons of treasures in Lion's Arch. Like, you, you can, can now get like keys. dive underwater and yeah. search, search for treasures in Lion's Arch. I've no, I haven't tried it out properly. Yeah. I got given two kind keys. Of interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think at this point, what WoW did was they made it so all of their expansions are. Just one game now. So from yeah. from vanilla WoW to Wallows of Draenor is one game, and then Legion's a separate game, and then Battle yeah. for Azeroth will be a separate game. But I think, I think until yeah, it probably won't do that for just not not for a while. I don't think. So it's still if I wanted to get a uh, path of fire, it would be the price twenty six pounds for yeah the base game. You always get like this shit. Though, I would right? recommend the one up from that. I think. Deluxe. Yeah, because I don't want a boost. I don't give a shit. But no, no, it's anything. not. Yeah, you know, it's additional character slot you want, unless you've got like loads already. I don't know how many I have. I haven't bought. I don't think I bought any character slot. What's the default character slot? You for get five. Well, that sucks. Yeah. That's how they there's get only, you. There's only um eight classes originally. That's how they get you on fucking Fortnite. It's like um save the world. It's like you can get more backpack slots. Yeah. What well, it's like more character slots. But I, I have I I have all nine. Return. Yeah, Balthazar. Oops. We 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 wreck. Spoilers. We wrecked him though. Ridlock killed- Rimstone gives still him. Still haven't sword. killed the giant chicken in the original trailer uh, for Guild Wars Two. No, he he shows up though. <laughs> he shows up, but you still haven't well, killed the, the big. Okay, the big the dragon. big chicken is the, in the in the original trailer is the lieutenant for the guy who shows up. Okay. Because there's like the huge dragons and there's That's the lieutenant which is slightly smaller. Chicken. Yeah. You can actually, there's actually world boss. That's a world boss you can actually kill. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to mention quickly, Guild Wars 1 uh, got a massive, like, graphics update. So if you're interested in Guild Wars 1, uh, there's a Wooden Potatoes comparison video that we were watching a bit earlier. And if you look at, like, the uh, like the render distance changes, it's pretty massive. Um, if you want to see the distance, check out this video. So, I mean, yeah, that's... Like, that's it off. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, it's a massive difference. Like, the game looks completely different with the field of view. Depth of field. I always get those confused. But yeah, if you want to check that out, I'd recommend watching that video. We won't watch it now, but we are going to do a section now where we're just going to look at some um, upcoming trailers. So there was a brand new trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2. So we're going to check that out. Listen to me. We don't want to kill any of you. But trust me. We will. Are you, are you hyped for it? Yeah. I'm hyped you for it. You went from PC though. I'm hyped for it as long as it comes out on PC. Yeah. That's what I'm hyped for. I played Red Dead Redemption, the original, um, yeah. I've, on Xbox 360. I've only played a tiny little bit of Red Dead Redemption. I've You've never owned it myself. I think Dave held out for ages for it to come out on PC. They but it never came will out. not no. crush us. Red Dead Redemption 1 was so fun. I really yeah, enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It looked the only good, thing right? that, There's a few issues I had with it, but... Like, I really like the like Paragon system yeah. sort of thing, where it could great. be good or bad, yeah, and it would affect you because you'd never seen that yeah, in sort of a... Uh, it was like Peter Mon, you actually implemented it properly. It was like in, like, in like GTA or something, yeah, your actions fun. never affected how people like treated yeah. you and stuff. Yeah, and it all, made sense to you to go one way or the I, other. I think sure, it, was just, it was just like way easier to be good and we have in Red Dead Redemption 1. So. Was it? Yeah. I, thought, I suppose someone said like they would prefer to be bad in it. But I don't yeah, know you can it's... prefer to be bad because <laughs> they got more loot or something. They got more money. I think I don't know. Yeah, you can get a little more than money, but if you're bad, basically you always have bounty on yeah. chasing up. And it's Brothers really fucking mistakes. annoying. But I got to a point where I was so good in Red Dead Redemption 1. I know that. Oh, I got to a point where I was so good in Red Dead Redemption 1 that it didn't like matter if I did something bad. Oh really? Because I had so much reputation. Okay. So I accidentally like lassoed a woman <laughs> and then I was just dragging her through the streets and I was like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> it I was like, be... shit. Because I pushed the wrong button, so I shoved her yeah. in the bush and I was like, oh, what can I do now? Where's where's the uh where's the defile button? Yeah. And um they didn't have one. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to throw on a train track. Report the bug. So I just threw her, I was just like, I don't actually know what to do with her anymore. So I just threw on the train track, and then a train came along and cut her open. And I got an achievement. I didn't know the achievement <laughs> existed. But there's, a, there's an actual achievement called Dastardly okay. for lassoing a woman and then putting her on the train tracks and then having a train run her over. Um, you're a good guy. I, I am a there good, was a good reason for that. I'm a, I'm a good, yeah. lawful guy. Bounty hunters don't come after me. Yeah. Savage. I, I, I like that. That's a good cool system. What do you think of the theme of this? It's kind of, it's kind of at the end of the wild west. That's Savage. What, it reminds me of the Pirates of Caribbean films. <laughs> I don't know. I, it depends what they do with it, I think. Yeah. We kind of saw it in the, in the first games. We kind of have like early, early cars. Yeah. In like the first game. That sort of era. With me. They're sort of like yeah, um love like oh the old cowboys versus the new the new civilization basically. Mm. I don't know, it depends how you do it, because like if you do it like how everyone's always wonder, done it, it can I wonder be really if boring. I have like the Ubisoft Montreal kind of thing when every every time an Assassin's Creed comes out, we are a team of multicultural people who are historians and we always Mul try and make things right. Multicultural French people. Yeah, multicultural <laughs> French people. Bonjour! I can't wait until the Ubisoft conference at E3 is like, Bonjour! We are Ubisoft! <laughs> um, but yeah, that was Red Dead Redemption 2. Do you want to give your quick last thoughts on it? I hope they don't fuck up the story. I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it. I'm but... hyped for it as long as it is on PC and doesn't get fucked over by Take Two Interactive. Yeah, that's true. Uh, modders specifically. Yeah. And I hope there's not like a bunch of the multiplayer doesn't get ruined by like microtransactions, which a hundred percent will. Anyway, yeah. next trailer that I showed Tony that I found was called Atomic Heart. I found someone uh, watching this on stream, and I thought it looked really cool. So I'll kind of just let you watch the trailer and see what you think, and then I'll just... talk about it afterwards. It is kind of weird to me though. Mm. It's got like a lot of Soviet vibes. What well, had Russian mm. <laughs> writing, so. I, I do love the design of these the machines though. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. I feel like this is what. Um, what's it called? The, the Norman Reese Hideo Kojima game oh. will look like in the end. It's just going to be a lot of crazy shit. <laughs> I do want to see gameplay first. Yeah. Something 
I love the art style, you know, the it, um, right. aesthetic. I find it odd that some of the art style reminds me of like um, an old game called Singularity. Like, the, uh, my comparison would be it's like Soviet Bioshock and then you said with blood. Yeah, a lot of blood. It also has like the and clowns. It has like a new Fallout 4 -y vibe at some points as well, sometimes. But like, this reminds me of Institute stuff from the new Fallout 4. And that and then it's just reminds me of Fallout 4 as well. I don't know, it's like a weird mix. So Big Daddy. Or it's like or it's a power suit, Fallout 4. But this game legit looks aesthetically cool as fuck and looks kinda of fun. Like we've yeah. got to see like a little bit of gameplay, a little bit of the, we see the map a little bit as well. Upgrade system. There's like a zone system as well, which we saw for that. I don't know if that's just graphics yeah. or if that's an actual part of the gameplay, but yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. A Hideo Kojimovich game. Somebody else thought it kind of looked like crazy Hideo Kojima yeah. game. I didn't see that before. You got evil cool. clowns though, and it's just really weird. Yes, yeah, so the final trailer. Uh, no, it's not the final one. Um, so Risk of Rain 2 showed some gameplay video and this time from Risk of Rain 1 which was like a 2D roguelite where you're fighting wave yeah. of enemies and you've got like money and then you upgraded yourself. Uh, it's now in 3D. So. And it's third person. Yeah, it's now third person what? 3D. Well, 2D was, it can never be first person. Well, well yeah. Nah, I, don't I, know. I mean, I mean, but I don't know, you could probably do that. I'd be interesting it if would you be, could try to do that. Tony, you know, t first person 2D would just be lines. Yeah. <laughs> there would be nothing. I could be a unique game. But really? you, could, you could, like, twist it on your head. I, I would I would be interested if someone could make that game. I've already made it. It's, <laughs> it's, right, it's, it's a... right there on the screen. It's just a line. <laughs> yeah, but does the line change? No, I don't know. I could do something weird with that. But basically, I think it's kind of the same idea. You kind of fight against waves of enemies, but the game looks a little bit more complex now. There's a lot more elements to it. There's, there's more strategic placing and where you stand, and it's going to change well, completely based on like. There's a whole plane where you can place stuff yeah. now, so. There's different terrain and different sizes, yeah. and there's also. Uh, it's going to. There's also an aiming element now, more so, uh, when it comes to the. You know, the whole uh, third person 3D. Like, terrain. Yeah, it's like a vertical terrain stuff that you can do stuff on. Uh, they showed two maps. They showed like a desert map. I'll just skip forward to that as well. Uh, which is, oh, I just... much prefer the colour palette of this. Yeah, it's I, much I, I more readable, yeah. I thought. A lot oh, I like the old one, but yeah, it was a little bit greeny cluttered, I thought. This one's very nice. And... But this actually looks pretty fun. I might yeah. check this out. I'm not a big fan of games where it's just wave -based. fight infinite waves. Cause I just don't... I, I really don't... like progression in my games. Yeah. I don't mind way based things, but I don't like the infinite round thing. Yeah. But yeah, that was pretty cool. And then the last trailer we're going to look at is uh, Runner 3. So I'm going to give. <laughs> also known as. <laughs> so I'd like to just say uh, the naming scheme for these games are confusing as hell. So if you don't know, the can first we... game is Bit Trip Runner. Can we give this game series our annual worst naming scheme yep. ever um, devised? So Bit to this Trip series. Runner. And then it was followed by number Bit Trip Runner Two, which was called Bit Trip Presents Runner Two: Future Legend of the Rhythm Alien. And now Bit Trip Runner Three is called Runner Three. <laughs> now, so we're just gonna call it Bit Trip Runner Three. We harp on like Doom Twenty Sixteen having a confusing name, but then yeah. you have to call it Doom Twenty Sixteen because it's it's just called Doom. Still but... to this day, people call it like Oh Doom. Which one? The original or the Twenty Sixteen? This has to be contention for. Confusing. This is even worse, yeah. You don't even... But it's, if you like platformers, it's really cool. It's like... Um, I, yeah. It's the platformer to a beat and you collect things in it. It's to a beat and it's got really interesting stuff happening on screen as well. Which is... I've never played the first two games, but I think really? I own them. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm I gonna played, play them at some point. I played a little bit of the first um, game and I've played a little bit of the second game. I think the next game I'm gonna try and play is probably Headlander. We might see a spotlight there, that sometime. Yeah. Although we do have quite a few queues of demos that we've been playing that are really yeah. cool. If you saw Squeakers last week, uh, I think we got a bunch more great games coming for Spotlight as well. Yeah, we, got, we actually found some interesting stuff this time. Post and these are all like, you know, not very big demos on Steam. So these are games you're probably not going to see anywhere else, which I think is really cool. Uh, if you want to see these games, you know, come and watch Spotlight because. 
we're kind of showing you a lot of great games you might not have otherwise seen. Is that Robotic Santa? I hope so. What the fuck is that? What the <laughs> fuck is a Sonic? Wait, there was a guy called Sir Strumming. <laughs> but S I R. Yeah. If you don't know, Sustrumming is a Swedish delicacy. It's um, oh, is it? okay. it's fermented herring. Oh. And I, I, we op- when I went to Sweden mm, last year, we we were gonna have some. We opened the can, and I think all of the boys were like gagging. It smelled like the worst thing I've ever smelled in my life. It sounds disgusting. Sustrumming is like you ferment like herring in a can for like two years, and then. Um, when you open it, it's like you've unleashed hell. It's like chemical <laughs> warfare. Oh, okay. It's like the, the the only way I could describe it is like imagine the most strongest gone off um, tuna you could ever smell in your life. Like that, that sounds kind of absolutely smell. awful. Yeah. Why is that a delicacy? It 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 doesn't taste like the smell. The smell's the problem. Yeah, but but surely, okay, maybe people eat things differently. But when I eat something, I can still smell it. The like, so when is, I eat something, like, I can, I can, it's like have the taste and the smell at the same time. But the, the problem is with sustrumming is that when you open it, you get like the fermented smell, so it comes yeah. out. But then you um, take off the skin, you cut it, and then you eat it with like um, potatoes and onions, right. and you have it in like a with some like bread. Okay. And that that actually maybe that'd be better. But... We didn't act so. At, wait, I, if you, I'll just tell you the story quickly. So we're we're in like a cabin. In my friend's woods. cabin in Sweden because I just flown out to meet these guys for the first time. Yeah, I'd never met them before. I met them online, and not, they were not just like, life. "We will, we will fly you out and come and stay here." And I'm like, "Yeah, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care." And everyone's like, "You're gonna get your your organs harvested." And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever, I don't care." <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, it happens. was a really good time. We were, I think we were, so we had a bunch of other food. We were eating some like traditional Swedish meatballs. We had some. Uh, were, they, were they good? We had some like yeah, they were really good. We had some like crayfish. Uh, if you don't know, it's kind of like a lobster you kind of find in like rivers and stuff. Yeah. Um. So I ate that for the first time, and it's, I I feel like when it comes to like lobster and crayfish and stuff, it's kind of like a lot of effort for not a lot of meat. You kind of most yeah. of the meat's like in the claws and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, I don't find the taste to be like. By this point, when we either, opened the but... sustaining, we were like. We were opening it in like the river, and we were like super drunk at this point. And Andy okay. was like skinny dipping in the lake, and I was hiccuping so much I couldn't talk. So um, it sounds like a wild run. It was. A, <laughs> it was pretty. If you've ever seen Ram Ranch, <laughs> it was much like that. It was much like Ram but in Ranch. Sweden. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look up the song Ram Ranch by Grant McDonald. You might want to get the Twitch safe. The version, safe edition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, that is the last trailer on our list. So we'll move on quickly to sh- quick news topics. So uh, if you didn't know, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery Forces released a game recently, which is a, basically it's like a, a game where game? You, you sit and wait and then you can advance or you can buy your way to advance. Um, and recently they had the beginning of the game. You had to pay to stop a kid from being strangled <laughs> or you could wait and watch him being and strangled. watch him be strangled. <laughs> which I think is fucking ridiculous. Which, um, which is basically the visual equivalent of all mobile games. <laughs> yep. But the thing is, if you don't, if you want to know more about the game, Jim did a Jimquisition yes. on this game, so he's done a he's like done a full like length look at the game. But basically, the whole game is like pay to wait or wait, wait, wait. Like, get to a point so you can wait some more. Yeah, you, you do lessons as well. And there's like two reset timers. Mm-hmm. It's like, and if you fail one there's of the reset a, there's timers, a second, you start there's again. There's a second timer where if you wait too long, you have to start the whole thing yeah. again. Even if you pay yeah. to get through a certain point. It's you fucking, pay for Yeah, you pay for like little parts ridic- of the lesson. Ridiculous. But then if you take too long with the entire lesson, it, the whole thing resets. But that was kind of funny. Here, the- here's the picture that everyone's <laughs> using. Uh, Isn't there a part you have to pay to smile? Yeah. <laughs> like at the start of a class. Yeah, you need to smile. Oh, ri- riveting gameplay, everybody. You have, like, these weird, confusing things, like you have gems and you have, like, money and stuff, and it's pretty confusing. Yeah, there's, like, time golden gems or something. It's just... Oh. But basically, uh, that was kind of funny in the news that um, 
a game was forcing you to pay to unstrangle a kid in a video, a Harry Potter mobile video game. Thanks, Warner Brothers. Thanks, you've, Warner Brothers. Really... You fucked it up I assume again. it's Warner Brothers. I'm only assuming that. Yeah, they own okay, Harry okay. Potter. Uh, so apparently uh, Netflix The Witcher show will have eight episodes and will film in Eastern Europe so Netflix have said recently uh, they're going to focus on sci-fi and fantasy mm. uh, projects recently they came out with Altered Carbon uh, Lost in Space Star Trek Discovery Yeah, um, they've done like a bunch of like fantasy and sci-fi stuff and they said this is the stuff they want to focus on you know, they, um, they do they do they... They're really good when they focus yeah. on those things. So. I'm really fucking hyped for a Netflix Witcher series. I think yeah. it has a lot of potential because the Witcher story is fucking amazing. And I have a lot of faith in the Netflix studios. Although there's a few dud shows that they've made, I think overall I the, the quality of well, Netflix stuff, shows have been good. I think going judging by like, stuff like Altered Carbon, though, like it could be really good. Yeah. So I, I have faith. I know that like, people say, so oh, apparently, just straight to Netflix saying, but... Eh. There's going to be eight episodes, and it may be done by 2020, but only the pilot's been written so far. Okay. So this isn't coming out any time. No, soon. no, it's just been... It's, yeah. it's, it's started production, basically. Right. Isn't The Witcher based on a book, though? Yeah. And then the book uh, owner is like, doesn't want to be associated with the game. But don't who owns the rights now, though? I don't know. Because I think there's like a weird... Pe- who owns the right? I don't know who owns the rights properly anymore. Maybe CD Projekt Red own the rights now? <laughs> who knows? But yeah, the person who wrote the book didn't like the game. Yeah. But it sounded like he didn't like games in general, so... But it was a bunch of tweets, basically, where he's saying, like... He was saying, like, eight episodes, 2020. This is basically all your news, but this was just, like, a quick news topic to say that there's, like, a um, Netflix series of The Witcher coming, like... Yeah. Um... There's one. Apparently, there's a Doom, Duke Nukem film with John Cena playing Duke Nukem. Oh, if you okay. remember, we were talking about yeah, that before. Yeah, I actually completely forgot about quick that. Quick news topic: <laughs> the Minecraft Bedrock update is coming to Nintendo Switch digitally and in retail. So, if you didn't know, they added Minecraft to the Switch, and it was on an older version, where basically um, the world size was limited, like the early console versions. So, if you're a Switch fan and you're a Minecraft fan, you can now have the big change. Minecraft moving to the Bedrock Edition, which is the uh, universal platform for all non-Java yeah. Minecrafts, is that the you C-based can now have game. an unlimited world. You have the latest update for Minecraft. Pretty cool. Which, yeah, I think will eventually include the Aquatic update as well. So. Yep. It's completely up to date. Cool. Uh, YouTube recently made a change to the Copyright Match tool. Um, this lets you use the tool to claim parts of videos... As your Revolutionary. Copyright. So I think this is targeted mainly at Fortnite compilations. So if you don't know, the biggest thing, the biggest thing on YouTube right now is Fortnite videos. They make yeah. more money than anything else. They get it's more the views than anything else. They've said that Fortnite makes more money than any other gaming trend on ever. YouTube ever. Yeah, like more than crazy. Minecraft. And specifically, Mi- like Minecraft used to be massive, and this is yeah. making more than that. Um, but I think, well, Fortnite's free to play. I think yeah. that's a huge factor in like Fortnite's success was the fact that they went free to play. Yeah, like we've seen like recently, like um, Darwin Project was was releasing as a full purchase, and they've moved to free to play mm. now. Um, what's it called? The other one, H one Z one. Oh yeah, um, they've has recently moved to free to play like. With the car update. Other than PUBG, all of these like battle royale games have had to start moving over to free to play well, to keep up yeah. with like Fortnite and PUBG. Um, but now, so the the big thing that was happening was like, say Ninja did something on his stream that was cool, or Myth did something that was cool on his stream. These are like big Fortnite uh, streamers, if you don't know. Uh, they would be streaming it. Someone would watch it, take that clip, and upload it into a compilation before they could even do it because they're still live streaming. Yeah. And then they'd make a bunch of money off it, and they'd take all the initial views already, and they'd get all the monetization from it. So now, and the problem was, Ninja goes, he's using my content in his video, uh, you know, uh, uh, but he also go, go, well, you can't claim the whole video because you're only in it for ten seconds. Yeah. But now with this new but tool, Ninja can go like, isn't I'm this, going to claim yeah. like my part of the video if you're going to steal my. Isn't content. this the tool we've wanted since the beginning? Because like yeah. people, like other companies, were like, "Oh, you've used a ten second clip. We'll claim the entire video." Yeah. No, I've only used ten seconds. Of video. You use ten seconds of our song. We're gonna claim the entire yeah. video. 
like it's, the UMG it's, media yeah, group. It's getting a lot better now because also like I, with I don't know Web if you Bristol. noticed with music videos and things that you can actually it embeds to it list now. You can actually like go to the store and buy it from iTunes now. Mm-hmm. It's like oh you so YouTube, Google, and stuff are, are getting there. I have this, been copyright but... striked a lot of times, so I know all about this. From I'm hoping uh, unlicensed music to my yeah. videos. But I'm hoping it will only younger. it will only claim like the small parts of it now, not the whole fucking thing. Yep. Like you put all this effort in. Yes, you enhance this little bit with like a little piece of music. You don't. I don't think you get the whole video though. That's crazy. But yeah, I'm I'm oh. I'm hoping this is it, the start of something good. Speaking about Royale games, PUBG uh, had an update twelve, and I'll just go over the quick section. So they got map selection. Which is a big hot button topic. Lots of people didn't want them to add map selection. Lots of people did. They banned some weapons, new scopes and attachments, the new weapons, you... the low rider. Why didn't they want to add map selection? Uh, the Murado and much, much more. So if you want to check out the patch notes for that, you can of course go to the community page and check that out. What? Why didn't people? Because they thought it'd split up the community. Yeah, but and they'd go. This map's a lot better, so everyone would select this. Yeah. And then matchmaking would be really terrible for the other map. Is my just. My quick I would right I now. would rather be able to choose them if I want to be on though. Mm. I'll be honest with you, but I mean, like, yes. But then it splits up like so. At the moment, they have first person solos, first yeah. person duos, first person squads, third person solos, third person duos, third person squads. Now there's uh, <laughs> all of those plus. <laughs> there's the desert map solo. First person desert yeah. maps, so, you know. I, I think it could get still to a, a point where it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but there is different cubes you're yeah, queuing up. For. There is a lot of people playing though, so it's not a massive issue right now. Right now, but I think it if, could become. Probably. I think PUBG numbers are definitely gone down from where they were since they've got so yeah. much competition, especially with Fortnite. So it could be an issue in the well, future. Like there was a point where H one Z one was like the Battle Royale game, and they were more popular than anyone else, and you've seen recently how they've just gone from being the Battle Royale game to being, you know, no one playing it, yeah. going free to play. You know? so we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that, so we'll move on to the next topic, and we'll start on Valve. Uh, Valve added a Bluetooth support and a Steam Link app for mobile for the Steam Link. Uh, could this be a competitor for something like the GPD Win? The uh, handheld Maybe. Get, uh, Windows 10 PC. Uh, so if you don't know, um, the Steam Link enables you to stream from your computer to a device. Uh, this was used so you plug it into like a HDMI on your TV and you could stream from your game computer upstairs, yeah. do couch gaming, and then you use the Steam controller to um, have the connectivity to the Steam Link in your PC upstairs and yeah. you play it on your. It was kind of like the idea of couch gaming from your PC using your uh, Steam library. Which it's is like a cool the, idea. The best of both worlds in a way. Now what they're doing is you can now use Bluetooth or you can use the app, which means you could now stream, say, to your phone. So if you had like a, you, they get you have like these uh, Bluetooth controllers for your phone, and they attach to those, and you can use controller on the phone. You can now stream 4K 60 FPS from your gaming PC to your phone now, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um. I think I think this will help a lot with what they're trying to go for, but. So the main competitor for this sort of thing would be the G- GPD Win, which can also have the Steam Link stream to it for yeah. like full 4K 60 FPS. So if you don't know, it's like a basically like a handheld. Um, it's like a handheld uh, PC basically. GPD Win Two. I'll just show this to you. I'll get a picture of it. You haven't seen this? There's videos by like um, Linus Tech Tips or uh, Low Spec Gamer who kind yeah. of push this thing to its limits. If you want to see like what you can, you kind can of play do. Doom 2016. On you that. can play Doom 2016 with like the Low Spec Gamer kind of ultra low graphics sort of thing. He was able to obtain 60 FPS on it, but that is you know pushing it to its limits with like internal resolutions. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, Doom 2016 is really well optimized. I don't think you can play GTA 5. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> Um, you can you can load it up because it doesn't GT5 still have massive loading screen issues. Yeah, <laughs> but um, when, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you can also Steam link to this as well. Yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. Use that technology instead. So this is kind of so one thing I was thinking of like um, 
what Steam could do is if they're kind of trying to corner the market of gaming on your couch, mm. but at the moment people are kind of doing that with the Switch, and the Switch's big advantage, you can take it anywhere, you don't have to be in your house yeah, as, for your PC. as well, yeah. Like, could they not just turn, like, the Steam machine... Um, Make a variant that's could they, more could they powerful. Not, if Valve was, was able to turn the Steam machine into, a, like, a portable gaming PC... Yeah. Um, it was small, like it was like a thing. console, kind of similar to the Switch. Uh, that would be really cool. I don't know what the hell that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll never. Know. We'll never know. What was that? Okay, sure. I don't know. I can't see anything that's changed. So sure. It sound like Streamlabs, but I don't have that open. No. Anyway. Yeah, but if, 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 if they were able to do that, then that would be really fucking cool. So hmm. Another Valve news. Uh, we saw that Firewatch devs, are all, all the Valve employees uh, now have moved over fully to Valve in their new office, and they are now Valve employees, but they are retaining creative freedom, which means they will still hate PewDiePie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They can still DMCA they can still, his they ass. Can, <laughs> I'm going to assume that PewDiePie probably won't play uh, no. Campo Santo games after they threaten to DMCA any future well, video he yeah. makes of their games. And You'll probably still play it and talk about it, though, because you can't do anything about that. Yeah, I guess. So, And a lot of his content, you don't need to see like what he's playing either to pe- make people watch. He's kind of in a good position for that. So, Yeah, that's just kind of a quick news topic there. Hmm. Um. And then finally, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller now has support via Steam input. So if you have a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, you can now use it on uh, Steam and Steam Big Picture, which is pretty cool. So we'll just move on to Nintendo news. Um, oh, so Nintendo said they're hiring a new level designer for the Zelda series. Uh, so basically, they're looking to... Let's open the article. Are they, are they gonna get um? Do they they don't want gamers or they don't want people who who play games? Nintendo is hiring a level design for the Legend of Zelda series. Will create events, dungeons, fields, enemies from design to actual implementation. And they should have a game planner experience on console games and be able to communicate in Japanese. Okay, so they still is, want a game. Arigato, I speak Japanese. Right, you're a I know one word. You, need, you can program. Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So one thing, yeah, as yeah. you mentioned, they said in the past they were look when they looked to hire people at Nintendo, they're looking for people who aren't game developers, people who can work out the box. And my initial thought is, yeah, I want everyone to work out the box. I want my surgeon not to have a medical degree. No, I want it to be that out of the box. But they said specifically they want they want experience in game design. So yeah. that's clearly not true. I should hope the person working on the news yeah. has a idea of game design. I guess there's definitely stuff you can bring that, like if you like if you new game design and you wanted and you knew, and you liked something else you could like bring something else in but like you still need the base of like understanding the limitations that you currently have with today's technology. I think it was uh, Streamlabs. It was I'm Soas ninety nine has followed. Thank you for the follow. Um, but yeah. We'll move on. <laughs> what? Okay, sure. S- someone followed that <laughs> on Twitch. That's pretty cool. It's never been done before. So we'll move on to pre E three topics, and then we are going to end the podcast after this. The THQ Nordic actually put out a statement uh, pre E three to say uh, the E three conference that's coming up next month. I think it is is June. Yeah. Um, that's next month. Yeah. It will be Not coincided <laughs> with the 2018 FIFA World Cup, and they basically they've said they don't want to miss the 2018 World Cup. Uh, I, think, I actually think that's great, though. But like, so that well, we're really interested in this. We don't want to miss it. Yeah. So fuck you guys. <laughs> You'd have to wait until is it PAX. games. Well, oh, PAX. Okay, not games. PAX yeah. West in Seattle. Yeah. Um. So so that yeah, it's going to be uh they're going to give information on Dark Siders three. Bio Mutant, Fade to Silence, and Wreckfest, and some unannounced titles. Oh yeah, they own Wreckfest now. Yep. Yeah, um, in Apparently, Cologne, Germany, after in Pax West Seattle you know, after E three. You know, we did the spotlight on like the second spotlight or something, but it's changed a lot since we did the spotlight. They've actually added actual content to it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. 
amazing. But THQ Nordic is like they're they're the guys they're the guys who saved all of the um well, all of the old THQ titles and half, well people that didn't the the silver what didn't what are they called because they whoever owns um Saints Row right now who's that people own Saints Row that's like, a silver deep, yeah silver deep silver deep silver that's it because they own the other half Saints Row. I don't. I really don't like De- Deep Silver at all. I think they're kind of shit. Is it the published. fourth title they made? Um, yeah. They own the rights to all the Saints Row. They own the devs. Developers violation high voltage software. Yeah. Okay. They they own the, that dev team, which is annoying. But would you would you I think, prefer, you I think about the idea of like a dev team just going fuck E3? Yeah, I, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> We're just gonna go and watch the World Cup and stuff. Yeah, I like that. I like, it's just like. We've got we've got more important things to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I kind of respect that. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like at this point, like <laughs> Nintendo has their own separate treehouse conference. Yeah, a lot of people are like removing their physical booths in the E3 hall and just saying, "Fuck it, dude, I'm gonna make my own." It's not conference. Yeah, it's so it's so bloated. It's almost not worth it for some some companies, I guess. But yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's a massive problem. If they're, they're going to show it at a different conference, I will watch, what's the problem? I will watch E3 this year just to see the cringe fest of... Well, we've got the snark of them. You know, 50-year-old game developers coming yeah. onto the stage um, just trying to be relevant and trying to <laughs> meme and just completely failing. And I'm then for, maybe wish, getting hope, to see a couple of cool I games. hope Ubisoft fails more this year than they did last year. They, they yeah. didn't fail last year. They like partnered with Nintendo for like some weird games and then. Hmm. But we'll move on to the last topic, which is our favorite person, Bethesda. Uh, Rage 2 was leaked uh, <laughs> pre 3. So they called out Walmart because Walmart, um, I think it was Canada, they uh, apparently accidentally leaked Rage 2 on their website. Um, they showed the incorrect key art, they did the wrong font, they were missing the age rating, and apparently. Um, yeah, they basically fucked up. Someone said, where's the next Doom? And then Pete Hines says, get a Magic 8 ball at Walmart and asked it. Because Walmart's <laughs> going to leak it all. Walmart's <laughs> the new leaker they, of all the Bethesda They always games. leak stuff, though. Like, they constantly leak things. I swear that that's what they're known for. So, so I don't know. I never played Rage 1, but I heard no. it had like really mixed reviews, more towards the negative side. I think it was just it was like a cool idea, but it was like boring, and there wasn't like enough to do, from what I remember. I didn't really but... see the hype for Rage Two Leap, <laughs> so I don't really know if people are actually going to play this. But I'll definitely check out the trailer at E3. In response to this, though, Walmart themselves actually said it was a glitch. They were like, "The glitch in the Matrix." It was a glitch. Like it's Kanye West all over again. Get up the link. I'm gonna need that link. Uh, Walmart says the glitch caused the E3 spoil and titles are speculative. The Walmart calendar leak included Rage 2, Splinter Cell, and Borderlands 3. Was and another. more. That's and our, more. What's the more game? But that's, see, that's a good but series. But apparently the spokesman said, yeah, yeah, these are all speculative things that we've been told about beforehand that may or may not come out. I think these are get, just like working titles yeah. we've been given. I, so we don't solution. fucking leak a bunch of shit. Yeah, I have a solution to this problem, Bethesda. Don't give them any information until you actually have a product to ship to them. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> you can't <laughs> really do that when it's like, we're going to announce... We're going to announce, like, um, Rage 2. You want to give them kind of some assets so they can put up pre-orders like as soon as it's announced. Like... An I announcement guess, of a game and then pre-orders is probably like a massive influx. Of I don't care about pre-orders, so you don't. I, I would, video yeah, game I know. I know they do. Very do. This would solve the pre- problem it, for me. Like two stones, one bird. This, this that, is that's like the a, that looks like a real oh. MLG gamer right there. Yeah, it's the pro Fortnite player. He's saw. having his Doritos. <laughs> I like a green keyboard though. You like RGB keyboards? I like RGB keyboards. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you can fix the problem of shit getting leaked when pre-orders are so important yeah. to video game culture. If you fix one problem, you solve the others automatically, is all I'm saying. Well, I think we're coming to an end, so as always, we'll read our Pete Molyneux tweet, and then we will end the show. 
Uh, thanks to anyone who's new to checking out the show. We appreciate it. I mean, and make sure to smash that. <laughs> smash we, have, that we haven't button. got the clip ready. We need, to... <laughs> we, need that clip of, we need that clip of Ninja going, smash that button. Um, <laughs> but if you don't know, we are we do our, love our developer Peter Molyneux, the original developer of Goddess and other Fable and other such titles <laughs> yeah. of, of Fable fame. Of um, what would you say is his most popular, most famous title? Probably Fable, right? Probably Fable, yeah. But I think everyone knows from Black and White as well. Okay. I think Black and White is like his game. It's like yeah, you you just love. Imagine a game where you grow old, and as you do. So the text in the game is so gradually get smaller and smaller. <laughs> Sir Peter Molyneux, everyone. I, I like I like the um the response. <laughs> the response. Imagine a game where the dev delivers their promises too hard for you to imagine. <laughs> Can you name one single promise that I've not delivered on? And I think that is an actual real Peter Molyneux quote. That he has said in the past, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> oh dear. Thanks, Peter Molyneux. And thanks Peter Molyneux for these great ideas. But that is the end. So you can check us out and everything in between podcasts. If you missed any of the show, uh, the VOD will be up as soon as possible on YouTube. Uh, we know we have a couple of viewers who like to come watch live, so they watch on YouTube. Uh, Twitch.tv Scorn will be live every two weeks uh, with the podcast. And on YouTube, you will be able to see the spotlight in between where we show kind of smaller games that not many people know about. And then if you want to follow me on Twitter for updates, it's at Scorn2000. Tony doesn't exist. He's not real. He's wanted by the FBI. Uh, yeah. That's the end of the podcast. Goodbye. No, no one, no one knows who I am. Bye. I need to set up the outro music. You have. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>